Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord who God's life. Okay, so deep within us is the desire to understand worship as what we do for God, not what he does for us. We get it switched around in our head all the time. Because in truth, the highest act of worship is not to give, but to receive from God. Still, the sinner that I am, I will show up at church with all of my righteous deeds polished up to hide the fact that they really are just filthy rags. I will show up with, on my mind, in my heart, all the people that I help you know, in order to get something back. All of the people I sacrificed for, you know, because I actually like them, never mind the ones that I ignored because I find fault in them. I'll show up with the gifts that I bring, never mind that I'm giving them to the one who gave them to me in the first place. Even the songs I sing. As if the one thing God wants more than anything is to be serenaded by sinners off-key while they all pretend to be content with situations they aren't and sinners thrilled to ignore everything wrong in the world because it would harsh the vibe too much. God takes all of them. He names them from my own mouth. All of this stuff that I would bring to worship as a gift to God, to give glory to him as if I somehow could. He makes me call them what they really are, even as we start church. I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities. This is what they actually are. It's selfishness, it's ego, it's idolatry, it's lust. All my righteous deeds are filthy rags before the Lord. But then he shows us what worship is. He gives us sinners gifts. He makes us sinners holy. He forgives, he comforts, he strengthens, he saves. Worship is God giving. Worship is us receiving. And if it's God who gives, well then it's God who decides what it is that he gives us. He says, this is my body. God gives it. God defines it. It is what he says it is. And it is worship. It is God giving you his body and blood to eat and drink that you would receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. Do you really think you've got it in you to change it if worship is about God giving to you? If God, the creator of the universe, is the one saying this is what it is? Luther in the large catechism is perplexed by our ego. He writes, What do you think God cares about what we do or believe, so that on that account he should suffer his ordinance to be changed? If worship is us giving to God, I mean, I guess it really does matter what it means to us. I mean, of course it would matter what we believe it is, but if worship is God giving to us, well then what really matters is what he says it is. It matters who he says it's for. It matters what he says it does. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sins. See, your second cousin's stepdaughter who was raised in the church but is now a Wiccan can disagree all that she wants, but God will not change the Lord's Supper no matter what somebody else thinks about it. And that, that is fantastic news, even if it brings about a little bit of conflict. Because the thing is, that means the, stuff, the, the Lord's Supper still is what he says, and it still does what he says. All of heaven will not stop singing in the face of unbelief. God doesn't stop hanging, handing out the forgiveness of sins and in the eating and drinking of his very body and blood just because somebody has a problem with it. And what's really amazing in all of it is that God actually wants to give that gift to sinners for their good, even those who don't yet believe what it is. He takes the Lord's Supper, he takes the sacrament, and he ties it to the rest of worship. It's not independent of everything else on Sunday, but it's joined together even as the, the ultimate the, the climax, the, the best, best part of the movie of the divine service. Because in that divine service, he also forgives us our sins in the absolution, in, in, in the preparation for the reception of the gift. He also preaches to us where faith would be kindled because faith comes through hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. And here, all of heaven starts rejoicing all the more that one sinner would be brought to repentance than the 99 who thought that worship was about what they did for God. Rejoice that this is bigger than what you think. This is about what God would promise for you.